Corn Reefers, I'm Daniel, and I have a few things to tell you guys today. Uh, this is about coral positioning, coral stinging. I just wanted to go over it real quick, just so you guys have something to think about. Um, I'm not going to go in full detail everything, but I just want you to know that the things I tell you right now are going to be beneficial and help you for later on. So let's get right to it. Um, I didn't do any lighting adjustments or anything, but I did draw over here on my trusty whiteboard. So this little gingerbread looking thing is actually a rock. So let's step back for a second. Let me show you guys what I have here. This is an imaginary tank, okay? These blue things up top are actually lights giving off light. So this is an imaginary par up top, 250, and this is an imaginary par down the bottom, 80. This is just stuff I'm talking about. You guys are gonna have to use your own judgment for your tanks and the lights you have and the depth you have and the corals you have and the healthier corals. So these are all just generic statements that I'm making for you guys. Um, just some little knowledge. I'm gonna redo this later, so just stick with me. All right? So right here we have at the very top, some of my favorite corals that need the most light are the Acros and the Montes, okay? And now someone asked about stinging about placement. Well, Acros are pretty cool. They grow very slow. They're easy to trim and they don't give off any long sweeper tentacles that will sting your other corals like the Euphilia over here. So they will encrust and they can cause a war on the bottom. If you have a Monty or certain corals, other Acros that were growing and touching, sometimes they'll find a little war and a little fight off and one will win. But no, they're way more controllable, the slow growing corals like the Acros than the faster growing ones. Um, like the, you know, foggies and stuff. So, okay, so the Monty over here, absolutely no stinging. There's no cells, anything that's going to come off that Monty. Montes are pretty harmless. They will kill other corals, and they possibly can, but for general statements, a Monty is safe. You can put it next to anything. So, this ugly looking thing over here is my frog spawn, and this thing is a sweeper tentacle. You won't always see this, but some people who are doing well and their frog spawns are happy in your tank or your philias, you will see a little tentacle with a little stinger on the end that will start to swing off. That happens sometimes. You can snip that off. It's not always going to happen, but when you're placing LPS corals and euphilias that give off um, a lot of room, a lot of tentacles, then you need to place them accordingly. You can put frog spawns and hammers and torches. I haven't had any problems with them next to each other so far, depending on your flow um, and how packed your tank is. But those type of LPS can usually stick together. So, and they're um, actually lower lighting. So sometimes you may want to keep these euphilias lower in your tank, but you can put them up mid-range depending on your lighting and the depth of your tank. So just to give you guys a little more information, this is a pally here. Pallies are pretty cool. They grow almost anywhere, high light, low light, but you do not have to put them far away from other corals because they, they don't seem to sting each other. A pally could grow right next to a monty and it'll just stay there. So the monty will tend to die off where the pally is, but the pally won't grow over top of the monty. Um, but different types of pallies can take over little smaller ones like zoanthids and sometimes little polyps like star polyps can take over. So different soft corals can invade other soft corals. And I, like I said, I've seen them very high light, very low light, but there's not any tentacles that are really coming off. So I know I'm dragging on to this a little bit longer than I wanted to, so I may redo this quick video and speak a little faster. But we're four minutes in, and I hope you've learned something. So the Favia I have here, they love low light. Too much light, and they can bleach out, and they can die. Um, but they do give off some tentacles sometimes. They're SPS corals, but some people will classify them as LPS. So I would say in this aspect, the fact that they have the sweeper tentacles, I would put them with the LPS. So Favias, you have to watch out for. They can sting each other and fight sometimes. Chalices, on the other hand, whoa, you got to really look out for them. They have a lot of territory sometimes. They're also a low par coral. Um, but they do require room on their own in a rock. Somewhere safe because they can do some damage. Um, I had one of my acros fall from up top all the way down onto my chalice and it just, dude, it, it wiped it out. I'm going to show you real quick just what it looks like. Um, and there it is. 
Everything's a mess, but that it is. It fell down, landed on my chalice, and just boom, was dead instantly. So I had no chance to save it. It landed right in the top of it. But anyway, as I continue, here's mushrooms. Mushrooms can go highlight certain mushrooms, and some mushrooms love super low light. So it really depends on your mushrooms, but they tend to like more of the deeper water, the blue lights, um, so they do pretty well. Same thing with Scoli, that's an LPS. They do like the lower light, but also high strong light. So it's like, you don't want to blast it, but at the same time, you don't want to undercolor. So you do need a par tester sometimes, or you just go by the depth of your tank and the lights and all that stuff. So we're all making judgment calls here. Um, Duncans, I have the Duncans in the middle of the tank, but they're not really strong photosynthetic, so you could pretty much put them anywhere. They do a lot of food collecting, so as long as your Duncans are getting fed, you know, they can live off light and food. They're pretty awesome. I love Duncans. Um, let's see, what else should I talk about? So, sorry guys, like I said, just dragging on here a little bit. Um, terrible design, just want to give you something to watch today. Um, yep. Yep, that's my tank. So, par value varies huge in a reef tank. And depending on the size and how much rocks you have, it blocks out a light. Um, now you can see up here how normally this light would bounce down if this was an open water tank. All these lights would be bouncing around and, and increasing their strength. But because I have my coral so high up, these lights don't interact as much and they're pretty far away from each other, so my par isn't as high as it should be. I really crammed my tanks full of rock, which is why I had to order more lights and, and really get more on here. I mean, look at this thing. I got rocks everywhere. This is crazy. So, but it's a six foot long tank and I wanted the fish to be happy. And like I said, I, I could not be more pleased with the way this tank turned out. So, now the only difference is this is live rock and I'm eventually getting rid of all the live rock in here. I do not want live rock in any of my fish tanks anymore. Um, but that's something I'll talk about in the future. So, thanks for watching guys. Sorry if this was unorganized and chaotic, but it's what you get. I just want to show you something today. I want to, you know, keep you guys interested. I've been busy this week and I'll have more coming for you. Just trying to get caught up and get ready on some, some things. So, keep your Montes high, SPS like it up there. Um, Euphelia's low, Fabia's low, Chalice is low. But depending on your lighting, your whole tank could be low. So you're either going to starve your coral light, you're going to burn it, just be careful. Do your homework, do your research, make sure you know what you're getting and what you're buying. And as always, thanks for watching and happy reefing. Until next time. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and share with a friend. And thank you for being part of the Coralus community.